Hello and welcome to another Airsoft video from Paraplays. In this video I'm going to be going through and having a look at the Ares Amoeba Pro KM15 inch Octoarms M4. When I was first interested in the sport and I went into the gun shop, I was like a kid in a candy shop. So many weapons in there, so many things that I just thought I would like that. But I settled on an M4, it's always been one of my favourite weapons whenever I've played first person shooters or other games, it's always the M4 I go to, it's probably because when they've got the extra goodies on there they always look super Gucci, always looks fantastic and I just think overall it's a great looking weapon. Now I asked for some advice on this because there are so many weapons in there, different variants of the M4, but a lot of people actually in the gun shop who had a lot more experience than I did said that the Octo Arms was a fantastic weapon lots of great parts within this gun and as a starter weapon this really was near the high end top end with a great ability to be able to customize this and upgrade even further should I want to. The Amoeba Pro comes in various different variations including the 7 inch, the 12, the 13, the 9 and also the 15 inch which is what I have currently. If you're going to be doing close quarters indoors then the 7 or the 9 is probably going to make things a little bit easier to get around those corners. There are two different variants of colour for this weapon, we can go for a full black alloy but we can also go for a down to earth smoky sandy colour which is what I went for. I felt it just made it stand out a little bit more on the battlefield as it were than everybody else's torn black weapon. Unlike previous Amoeba variants, this M4 platform is all based within an alloy receiver unlike its polymer predecessors, it feels absolutely rock solid. This is due in part to lockable body pings resulting in a solid receiver with absolutely no wobble. The change doesn't end just there, the Octo Arms range comes in several key mod rail lengths and these again are all alloy with other alloy parts including a buffer tube, outer barrel, charging handle, flash hider and many more parts. The Gearbox is a tried and tested product from Ares, featuring the latest Generation 3 blue chip and you can program your fire modes should you want to. We also have an electronic blade style trigger and I can tell you out of nearly all my weapons this trigger feels absolutely fantastic, it's really responsive and snappy. And If you've ever tried a weapon where the trigger's a little bit loose and just feel like you're not getting the feedback that you want then I can highly recommend this weapon, it feels absolutely fantastic out in the field. Out of the box the weapon comes with two flip up iron sights but these are actually made out of polymer and you can adjust these for windage and elevation of course there is one at the front and one at the rear just under the sight as you can see I've attached. To the rear of the weapon we have our sling attachment, it's quite a nice solid piece of metal here and we can actually take this off simply by pressing the quick release button on the top such as this and pushing it back in and believe me this is really quite secure you're certainly not going to lose this or bump into this by accident, nice little click as you push it in. To the front of the weapon we have a flash hider and this simply just screws on or off so again another part of the weapon that you can easily customise if you want to put on there a sound suppressor, silencer or any other parts that you've probably got for the majority of your other weapons. The M4 comes with two different mounting systems, on top of the actual weapon we have the Picatinny rail which we're all used to and on the side of the weapon we have the new system that's been introduced into the military which is called key mod. So if you are wanting to put some of your accessories on here you will have to look into the key mod or the Picatinny depending on what you're actually wanting to put on this weapon and where. But it certainly does give you lots of options and variations for putting all your attachments on this Ares M4. I've attached a universal bipod on the front here because I've actually set this weapon up to be in the DMR role so I'm kicking out a little bit more power over 400 FPS but there are certain engagement rules with this weapon but you need to check with every individual site to make sure that you're actually going to be running legal. To reach the hop up on this weapon we simply pull the cocking handle back and that's probably the only part of this weapon, the actual cocking handle that feels a little bit flimsy. Everything else is rock solid and as you can see there is the hop up and it's quite easy to change in the field with a pair of gloves should you want to. And when we actually release it back it's got a really nice beautiful clunk to it, it feels like a really solid piece of kit. The mag release is actually really accessible, really easy, you don't have to mess around with this, just a simple click and the magazine will pop straight out. No problems whatsoever so if you wanted to, to do your tactical speed reloads in the field you certainly can with this weapon. Putting your mag straight back in there's a really nice clunk and click as it goes back in, again everything on this weapon feels absolutely beautifully rock solid. To the rear of the weapon we have the adjustable rear stock, 
which you can move at six different positions by lifting this small little grip here. This is actually where the battery compartment is as well. Nice little clunk there as we go back in. And to access the actual battery compartment, we pull this little lever underneath. Now you really are gonna have to pull this down quite hard and keep that pull down to be able to extend it out. Not the easiest thing to do with one hand in the field. So just be aware of that when you're wanting to change the battery. I would recommend quite a small LiPo battery, probably a 30C in there, as it can get quite tight trying to squeeze that battery in there. So just be aware of that. There are not too many markings actually on the weapon. There are the few OctoArms logos on each side and a small descriptive part of lettering here, but really overall the body is quite clean. Overall, I'm really, really happy with this weapon. I did upgrade it, as I mentioned earlier, to the DMR roll, so I am pushing 400 FPS on this baby. I'm pulling the trigger and actually feeling the rounds going out, or the BBs going out. There is a real nice thud to it and it's got quite a, quite a nice little bit of recoil obviously it's not going to be the same as a gas blowback but you can feel it on the shoulder and it does feel very responsive it looks cool it feels cool the triggers extremely snappy and overall it really has worked in open spaces really as a fantastic weapon for dmr and it was originally an assault weapon and i've kind of moved on to the warthog now when i want to do up close and personal but i'll do another video on that as we're having a respray and a few little goodies done on that gun so if you are considering a really beautiful looking m4 an assault weapon or dmr or even if you want to go close quarters there are variants within this class the m4 up to arms for everybody and i really can't encourage you or recommend this weapon enough i've had no problems with this whatsoever in the field, although I shouldn't because it's new, but it feels rock solid. There's no squeaks. It feels like you're getting a fantastic weapon. And overall, it gets the para thumbs up seal of approval. Let me know your thoughts in the box below. But overall, I can't wait to get out and I shall be doing some more videos, no doubt, when I do a few more little tricky little bits on this weapon. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been Para Players, and this has been the 15-inch Octo Pro Arms. See you on the battlefield. Bye-bye.